Aloha, and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today has an unstoppable passion for new music, one that has kept him on tour and in the studio. He is best known for that funky tune in the 80s titled Funkin' for Jamaica. Remember this tune? He continues to captivate listeners as an entertainer who has successfully mixed stage presence and musical artistry with a sincere audience connection and warmth. My guest has definitely worked with some of the industry's best and brightest musicians, having shared the concert stage with Bob James, Najee, Roy Ayers, Joyce, Joyce Sample, Melba Moore, and a host of others. Please, let's welcome Mr. Tom Brown to the show. Aloha, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> got me moving already. I, I got you moving right. You know, it's in my ear, so you know I'm, I'm moving it and stuff too. But how are you? Thank you so much for being here with hey, us today. Thanks for, thanks for having me, and, and, and thank you to you and your listeners for supporting this music. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, no problem. You know, I love music. And it's just a, it's such an honor for me to interview today because listening to that song, Brings back memory. <laughs> so now I'm actually talking. I'm talking to the guy. It brings back headed. about. It brings back about three inches of my hairline. Actually, it really does. <laughs> well, let, let's let's get started because I'm sure my audience and my viewers they want to they want to know more about you. So, how did you get started in the music industry? Uh, I got started. Uh, well, my first recording. Uh, was back in 78 on GRP, but I actually got started uh, through a gentleman named Weldon Irvine. Uh, Weldon was the uh, songwriter and arranger uh, that did uh, Young, Gifted, and Black for Nina Simone mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Clean for Freddie Hubbard. Uh, he was a very, very gifted arranger and happened to live in the uh, Jamaica, Queens area. And he was really responsible for bringing all of Jamaica cats together, Bernard Wright, uh, Lenny White, Marcus Miller, uh, myself, uh, uh, Omar Hakim, uh, just just so many so many young musicians who were in Jamaica uh, came through Weldon's band. Now, what made you start playing the trumpet, though? What made you start wanting to play the trumpet as as far as your music musical instrument? That that was that was a whole nother story. There was just something about the instrument, uh, uh, the the regalness of it. I actually started out uh, and still do play classical trumpet. Uh, and it was just something about, uh, you know, uh, announcing the king or something that, that just drew me, <laughs> that just drew me to the sound of the horn. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, I've, I've always just loved the, the pop of it, really. Really? Well, I tell you, you can play it because, you know, listening to you and, and researching about you, I'm like, wow. Now, let's talk a little bit about that Funkin' for Jamaica tune, because that was just one of your greatest hits. That was just one. Um, but how did all that come together with the title, uh, the the musicians that were in that? Because when I watched that video, that just looks like you guys had a great time in the studio doing that. We 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 did actually. Actually, the stu the the video track was just dubbed. I hate to say it, but it was not the musicians. Well, except for the vocalist, it was not mainly the musicians who did the track. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's good. I know that's going to get me in a whole lot of trouble. Why well, I'm going to get some phone calls tonight. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, the, the that that album, the Love Approach album, was was ninety nine percent done, and the record company said, oh, "It sounds like it needs just one more song." And uh, I had this bass track and you know this drum beat bass track that I was working on, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really just brought it in the studio, showed it to showed the bass track to Bernard Wright and you know on synthesizer, and he said, "Oh, I dig," and he just just expanded it. Uh, Bobby Broom and Marcus Miller put the you know, the plucking sounds on top of. We just built it up. We built wow. it up from nothing. Um, uh, horn parts built it up from nothing. Uh, and Tony Smith uh, was the fiance of the keyboard player that was playing in my band at that time. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, nobody nobody knew. She just she was a Shaka Khan. I won't say sound alike. She had her own thing happening. But Shaka didn't have a record out at that time. Oh wow! And Tony dropped Tony dropped Jamaica Funk, and it was just right place, right time. You know, people. Thought, oh, that's Shaka's new record. Uh, well, okay, if that helps sell a record, great. Right. I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> well, that was a that was that was a hit album. 
for you. That was one of the hit albums for you. Yeah, it was. A, it was a blessing. Now, what people I, don't, I, I, huh? I, I actually, tr I actually tried. Uh, I actually tried going on stage and saying, "I'm not going to play that tonight." Uh, that that didn't work out. Too but well. it never. But it. it all, I, I. I'm pretty sure every time you go on stage, somebody wants to hear that. Correct. Oh, I, I always play that song. I mean, See? The, 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 day I, the day I tried not playing it, it wasn't pretty. So I, just, <laughs> no. so I, I, I always do that song. <laughs> now, what a lot of people don't know, because I'm, I, I want people to know this too, is that you're also an airline pilot. I am. And you also majored in physics. So what school did you go to with, with your, when you were majoring in physics? I went to uh, Kingsborough Community College, uh, which is part of uh, City University in New York. Okay, wow. And then what made you get into being a pilot? Uh, that that actually was my passion, passion that I was going to do a uh, career uh, out of. Uh, it was going to be my primary career. Uh, music was going to be my cool out, my hobby. <laughs> uh, and, and somehow, you know, things just got flipped around and uh -huh. I still do both of them. Uh, it, it, it works out fine. I mean, the, the the job I'm flying with now gives me two weeks on, two weeks off. Nice. So you you know you know what I'm doing during those two weeks <laughs> off, right? <laughs> yes, yes we do. Yes we do. So you have the best of both worlds, which is awesome. You get to fly, and then you also get to play your music. So that's awesome. That's that is that's awesome. It. Now describe I, your I, sound I, to me. Go ahead. No, I was just saying I get to I get to listen to 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 Gwen from Hawaii Smooth Jazz <laughs> Connection during my two weeks off and appreciate good music. And yes, I, I appreciate do. that. And that's why we're going to have to get you <laughs> over here as well so I can speak to Definitely. you in person. Now, describe your sound to me. What sets you apart from other trumpeters? One one thing that I learned early on, and I guess I learned it from my classical training, is that sound is everything. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are there are some players who who go oh you know that ninety percent of their effort is in high register or speed or uh, you know certain articulation. My, I, I learned early on that any instrument is an imitation of the first instrument. The first instrument is the human voice, mm -hmm. uh, and and so I try to make my horn sing. Uh, no matter what I'm doing, it's got to have some kind of uh, some kind of singing element to it. In order to be relevant, uh, you know, you know the, the the trumpet greats that I grew up with, uh, you could hear them, and in one or two notes, know who it was: uh, Dizzy Gillespie or Clifford mm -hmm. Brown or Lee Morgan, Freddie Hubbard. Any of those guys, all they had to do is play one or two notes. And say, oh, that's Freddie, or that's Dizzy. Right. Uh, those those I won't say those days are are not the same, uh, but it's definitely what drives me. It's it's definitely what I go after. Nice, nice. Now, what do you enjoy about uh, being a musician? What do you enjoy Ooh. about that? Uh, uh huh. Well, 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 considering that <laughs> that when I went to shake the hand of my wife's grandfather when I met her, and uh, he found out I was a musician, and he said, "Listen, you know, hurt my little girl." Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was the first words from his mouth. Oh uh, wow! So I, 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 so I enjoy surviving. I, you I enjoy, enjoy surviving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I being able, I enjoy being able to live without uh, someone knocking the heck out of me because oh, I'm a wow. musician, you know. Oh wow! Uh, I mean, I mean, musicians are known for doing some crazy things. I mean, let's let's face it, you know. Yeah, let's, I do. I know it. a few I, of I, them too. I, I, I try not to do crazy things. <laughs> now let's no. talk about your your new CD. Um, it's come what may which is released earlier this year. And you have two mm -hmm. hits, or you have two up and coming songs, which I call hits because I love both of them, that are on mm -hmm. that CD. And the first one is Mia Moore. And the vocalist on that, her name is Joyce San Mateo. How did that come about? How did that collaboration come about with Joyce? I, I, I got called to play the uh, Delft Jazz Festival in the Netherlands in 2003. Uh, and a lot of times when I travel, I just pick up a band wherever I go. And so I was going over to Europe and, and uh, picking up a band over in, in uh, the Netherlands. And Joyce was one of the featured singers 
uh, that was going to be in that backup band. And you know, she she she's a she's about a a, a five a five foot Filipino gal, mm -hmm. and so my reaction was like, okay, how's she gonna sing Jamaica funk? Okay, <laughs> and she opened her mouth and just knocked me out. She she's. She's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. I think my viewers can hear it, but um, we're playing a little bit of the song, Me and More, and her amazing voice. When I first heard it, when you first contacted me about it, and I first heard it, I was like, wow. Wow, I absolutely mm. love that song. But then you also... Yeah, she, she, she actually, she has the ability to go any direction. She can go funky, she can go smooth, uh, she, she can cover it all. Well, she has that smooth, sultry voice, and I can I can guarantee mm. you the next time um, that I speak with you, I would like to have her here um, with us so we can um, talk with her as well. But the other Absolutely. song um, called The Groove Line, mm -hmm. if people hear that, they're going to hear like, oh, I remember that song. I've heard that song before. Not 1975, I think it was, or four, or yes. so, somewhere around there. Uh -huh. Heat wave. Yes, yes, oh, there's yeah. a heat get, wave get song, your, but it's the get smooth your disco jazz. Shoes off. <laughs> That's the smooth <laughs> jazz, the smooth jazz version that um, you and Joyce do, and it, and it, I love it. See, people are watching, and you know I want to move because it's in my ear right now. But yes, the Groove Line, both of those tunes, Me and More and Groove Line. Those are both on Tom's new album called What What Come What May. You guys need to go out and get it because I will be playing it on my radio show. Best believe that. Now, you have worked with many people. Many people. I named them at the beginning. Who would you like to collaborate with next? Oh, there's so many great musicians um i i've i've always admired uh quincy jones mm -hmm. uh you know so th there's only a handful of producers who uh have the ability to find an artist and shape the world around that artist rather than shaping that artist to the world uh in other words let the artist retain their originality and find music and arrangements that work for them. Mm -hmm. Quincy is one of them. Dave Grusin was definitely another one. Uh, is definitely another one. Uh, Bob James, you know, folks like that. They're they're very far and few between. Um, I, I would like to do something with Quincy at at some point. Uh, he he is so far in a different league that I don't know. If, you know, if that happens, it'll be it'll be a blessing. And I can see you doing that as well. I I, I feel it. Well, then. I feel that it. That would be a blessing. <laughs> now, what's blessing. what's coming? Blessing. What's coming up next for you? I know for a fact. I just came back from the Long Beach Jazz Festival, so I know oh. for a fact that you will be at a few festivals coming up. So, what else do you have in I, the works? I've got the. Uh, I'm hosting the Oxnard. Yeah. Uh, Oxnard California Jazz Festival coming up. Uh, I've played that the last couple of years in, the, in a row, and so I'm I'm actually hosting it this year. Uh, doing Jazz Cafe over in London. Uh, I've got uh, Los Cabos, Mexico. Uh, I think it's called Lux, Lux Life Jazz Festival. Uh, and, that's, and that's actually going to be a nice one. That's with Roy Ayers and Ronnie Laws and uh, quite a few of my, my friends that have that, uh, uh, been with through the years. Uh, so just a lot of things happening. Just you know, finishing up this CD, getting it out there, uh, doing a lot of touring and uh, try, trying to spend some time during those Two weeks I have off from my flying job at home as well. Oh, nice! Uh, my wife has my wife has a honeydew list, and you know that's. <laughs> you, have that that done, so. you have to get that I done. You have to get that done. Well, we have Absolutely. to we have to go on a quick break, but we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Sounds good. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at one o'clock for Cannabis Chronicles. The 10,000 year odyssey where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. I thank you. Hi, guys. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. 
I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwen Harris, and I am here with Mr. Tom Brown, that, hey smooth, <laughs> that smooth jazz <laughs> funky trumpeter. Um, he is here with us today, and I am just so honored and, and glad that he could be here with us. Now, we, I mentioned in, in previous to this, pre previous to the commercial, I should say, we talked about what you had coming up. Now, what... If you could change anything in the music industry, what would it be? Uh, probably a lot of the, uh, well, rather, let me, let me focus. A lot of the younger players, uh, like everything else that our youth are doing, don't take the time to learn a lot of the fundamentals. Uh, as with everything else, it's, it's give it to me quick, give it to me now. Um, and, and so there's just so much sampling going on. There's so much, uh, auto tune going on. There's so much instant arrangements going on. Um, uh, I, I would say to take the time to learn the business, take the time to really hone your craft. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. It happens over decades. Um, and so, I mean, to, to, to almost anything that, uh, young people are doing today, take the time is probably the, the, the key words I would use. And see, that's one of the questions that I was going to ask you was, um, what advice would you give an up and coming uh, musician today in the industry? Because, uh, you know, like you said, some make them, some make it and some don't. Um, so that, that, was, that was pretty good advice. But this next question that I want to ask, I ask of all of my musicians that um, that I interview and it's really important to me just because I you know I grew up playing music since the age of six and I started out in the schools and I played all the way up through college um, at Hampson University in the marching band so my question is what is your thought on the arts and music being taken out of some of the schools some of the school curriculum yeah that that's that's a really uh, serious peeve that I have. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are so many studies that show the correlation between the arts uh, and uh, mathematics, the arts and the sciences, uh, it, as far as development of, of skills in other areas. Music is essential. Music is really uh, helps wire the brain in so many ways. Uh, yes. That's why music is therapeutic. Uh, in, in, in so many ways. Uh, it, it was a huge mistake to take uh, music out of the school systems. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, it's, it's the communities that have the higher tax brackets that still mysteriously have music in their programs. Yes. Uh, so it makes me wonder sometimes if it's by design. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave that to the interpretation of the, of the listener. <laughs> I, I have to be politically correct. I, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and I understand. And I understand exactly what you were saying. Now, what yeah. is your favorite song that you have ever recorded, and why? Uh, you know, I, I I have a habit. Every time I do a uh, do a record, uh, I try not to look back on that record. I try to just keep moving. Um, Probably, you know, I, I, I would probably say Mia Moore, Mia or, Moore. Or, or Groove Line, <laughs> uh, Mia, Mia Moore or Groove Line. Just you know, so, so from the new record, go out and buy that record, people. It's Mia Moore. You Groove heard Line. that. You heard that. You have to go out and, and, and buy Tom's new album with those those two songs. I'm telling you, Mia Moore and the Groove Line. You're gonna you're gonna I, love it. You you will love it because I, I do. Said, I, I I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> I, oh, I did. I did say that myself. <laughs> Now, can you play a little bit? <laughs> can you play a little bit of something for us? Just a, just a little bit of something. 
Just tease oh, us with a little bit well, of something. I, well, well, I just happened to have this thing. You just happened? I don't, I don't know. How, how, how did this thing get here? <laughs> it just, uh, yeah, this, 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 is, this is my new baby. I, I, I needed, a, I, needed a, I, I got a couple of trumpets, but I needed a new. Well, my other ones are like 30 years old. And, uh-huh. uh, they're still in good shape. But uh, so I worked out a deal with Phaeton Trumpets, and uh, so I'm in Justin. So it's my, it's my new. I'm, pr- I'm proud of my baby. I'm, I'm super proud of my. my that's my your, baby. that's your but, new baby. Uh, what's the company? What's the, my, that's, what's the company line again? Who is uh, it's, it? It's, it's called Phaeton. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I could I'll try a bit of maybe Mia Moore or something. And, okay. Uh, Whatever. Uh, uh, so yeah. my wife in here any second because i wrote that song for her so oh nice <laughs> so you met you met that for you you made that song for her you wrote that for her the the, the entire album uh uh come what may is dedicated to my wife it's actually as uh a, a victory over breast cancer album. okay uh the the, the actual the, the y in may is actually the the ribbon uh symbol and the, and the whole record is uh everything on it is is about uh yes this we we beat this or she beat this uh with god's help uh and uh it's uh it's it's about a brighter outlook uh wow. for anyone who was who's going through that uh that uh, dreaded disease well that's that's a beautiful song cuz cuz i have heard it um and i'm going to now i'm going to play it over and over again now mm. um now tell me about or tell tell the viewers tell me and the viewers about your organization and it's titled Aerolina Music and Flight Support. What's that all about? Uh, I used, when, when I first started commercial flying, uh, this was long after I got my license years ago, but back around uh, 87 or 88, uh, I flew for a gentleman named Warren Wheeler. Uh, Mr. Wheeler was the first African, African-American pilot uh, that was hired and flew as a captain for Piedmont Airlines, uh, mm. Piedmont became U.S. U.S. Airways, and U.S. Airways merged into uh, American Airlines. Uh, he he's long since retired, but he and I got together and uh, were trying to find a way to uh, get high school students who uh, couldn't necessarily afford the extreme cost of the the flying lessons. When I when I started, it used to be fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars a flight hour to rent an airplane. That same plane now is $150 a flight hour. Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, so it costs multiple thousands of dollars just to get your basic license. Uh, there's, 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 there's a better way to do that. And actually a lot of the airlines are starting programs now for, for aviation cadets, you know, kids in junior high school or high school to get interested in this and pursue an aviation career. They're making ways uh, to do that. But that's, that's what we're doing also. We're, we're pretty much working with high school age youth uh, with a, a, a simulator that Mr. Wheeler purchased uh, and actual flying lessons. And uh, we're pretty much, I won't say guaranteeing, but we're making it available that by the time that these kids graduate high school, they have their private pilot license uh, in hand. Nice, nice. Now, where can people, if they want to, to donate to your organization, where can they, where can they donate to? Uh, if they go on to uh, www.aerolina, that's it's like Carolina except with an A, Aerolina, A I A I R O L I N A dot org, triple W Aerolina dot org, uh, and there's a uh, 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 donation link on that. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, and we're also a STEM uh, based program. Oh, okay, all right. Um... Now I know you said that you're going to be at Oxnard, and that's going to be. I think that's mm-hmm. that's at September, right? September the fourteenth, uh, something around there, around September. Yeah, I could I could find out real quick. Yeah. I, 
<laughs> because I just I, want I, people I think... to know that if they're going to be in that area, in the California area, you never know. I may pop one over there. Um, like I said, this was in Long Beach. So I may pop one over there to the festival. Um, but where can um, people go to find out where your upcoming dates are if they want to see you? Yes. And, and yes, it is October 14th uh, for the Oxnard Jazz Festival. Uh, you can go to my website, which is Tom Brown with an E dot org, uh, triple W Tom B R O W N E dot O R G. Uh, or you can catch me on uh, Facebook at uh, Tom Brown Jamaica Funk. I don't know why I named it that. But it seems pretty, <laughs> pretty popular. <laughs> So yeah, either one catchy. of those, they'll, will, they'll remember it that way. Uh, yeah, they'll remember yeah, it yeah. that way. They'll, they'll, they'll bite him in a song like that. I, I, <laughs> I just can't remember. <laughs> so to my viewers, you have to go get Tom's new CD. You have to get it, and it's entitled "Come What May." And I'm telling you, yeah, my those, two, those, huh? those two singles are actually. Those two singles are, are the first from the CD. It it will be out in about a month. It's not in about it's not a month. Out okay. Yet. Yeah. So but, I'm but promoting. I'm promoting for you beforehand. Beforehand. That's what. So much, we're, much appreciated. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna put thank it out you. there beforehand. Um, so uh, those two songs that if you heard them were "Me and More" and "The Groove Line." And Joyce San Mateo, she is the the vocalist that is on those two tunes. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Just like Tom, oh, amazing yeah. in playing the trumpet, in playing the <laughs> trumpet. So, Tom, you know, we really, I really would like to get you over here to Hawaii. We need to have a little funk session over here in Hawaii. I'll um, do it. And of course, you're going to have to play that too, no? You're going to have to, you're going to no, have to play no. Funkin' for Jamaica. You can't get out of that one. Fun, you can't. Funkin', funkin' for Honolulu. I mean, yeah, I'll, there I'll you do go. It. I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> There you go, fucking for Honolulu. I, I like that one. But I thank you. <laughs> I thank you so much for being here with me on the show. I really do. Um, and we're right, definitely gonna me. we're definitely gonna have you back here. And and to all my viewers, you can listen. I will be playing Tom's music on my radio show on Sunday. So just listen to Smooth Jazz Sundays in Paradise. I will be playing his music. And I don't know, Tom, maybe you can call in on my show on Sunday. We'll see. We'll talk about that offline. I, I could do that. Okay, we'll talk about that. Because it's, it's all about you. It's all about you and, and getting your music out there. But thank you again, Tom. I appreciate you. God bless you. And to my viewers, until next week, aloha. Thank you all so much. And God bless you.